we shall start our session. First and foremost, thank you everyone for investing your evening with us um, to learn together on the topic of investing in times of crisis. I hope everyone is faring well in these very uncertain times. As you know, the stock market is very uncertain as well. <laughs> okay. Um, so before we start, we need your participation. Um, hope you can, um, if you have any questions on the topic of investing in times of crisis, please get them ready and then post it into the comment box. Um, then I'll be able to invite Colin to respond to them. Help us to share this Facebook live video as well with your friends so that we can all learn together and please help to like this video to encourage us. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, three, three lucky viewers today will walk away with a copy of the Systematic Trader. Um, uh, this will be for viewers who post questions during the live session itself in the comment box. Um, it doesn't matter whether we pick your question or not, but as long as you post the, post the question, you will qualify for the lucky draw. So, um, Take note for on Candid Creation Publishing page on Monday and you will know who are the winners. Today, we have none other than Colin Xiao who is with us. So a brief intro of Colin. Uh, Colin is an, in, is an author, speaker and trader. He's also a qualified chartered portfolio manager holding a CFP qualification and a member of Mensa Singapore. So obviously Colin, very high IQ person. Eh? Uh, also, a member of Technical Analysis, uh, sorry, Technical Analyst Society Singapore. He's also a trainer with CyberCode and also inventor of the stock trading software Trader GPS. Colin is obviously a regular speaker at conferences and seminars such as Share Investment Conference, Share Investor, Invest Carnival, Philips iFest, and Meta Stock Conference. Disclaimer: All right, as usual, everything we share today. Um, please do not take that as financial advice. Do your own due diligence. We are merely sharing experience. So past track record cannot be taken as the future performance. All right. So I'm going to stop the screen share. Just give me a minute so that you can see us. Yes. All right. <laughs> Colin, finally they can see you. You want to say hello to our viewers? Hello. Hi, hi everyone. Good to see everyone here. Okay. You can hear me, Let's see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us this evening, Colin. Thanks for spending yeah. your time. I know yeah. you have a very, very long day today. We were just talking about it. Uh, obviously, you're feeling very tired, but you are still um, helping us and answering no, 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 questions no. from our viewers. Yeah, thanks. thanks so much for inviting me, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah I've been, <laughs> yeah, 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 really be a great, great publisher and even to today, you are still <laughs> helping, helping me. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Hey, hello, Sam. Sam just joined us. Yep. Um, okay, so now is the time for you all to pose any burning questions on the topic of investing in time of crisis. Um, to our guest author, Colin, yep. Um, any questions you would like to know on the topic of investing in time of crisis? Okay. While you are warming up, I think I will start with the first question to Colin. Yeah. Um, so Colin, the market uh, in the past few weeks I've seen is uh, uh, been very erratic. Yeah, uh, moving up and down. So yes. I guess the big question on everybody's mind right now is um, what is happening right now and uh, where do you think the market is heading? Oh, what's happening right now? Huh? Okay, since the market yeah. has made its high, I think it was on the 20th. It's very easy to remember when is the market high. The market high was on the 20th of February, 2020. Nice number, right? Wow. Two uh, so was that was actually a market high you know uh covid started somewhere in the uh december in uh in china but really didn't affect the market the stock market but on the 20th of uh, december uh 20th of february 
the market started to really correct, you know, from, from, from 20th onwards, it corrected almost like 30%. Normally, in wow. when we talk about the stock market, a correction of 20% is considered a bear market. But the market, uh, the, the index really, I'm talking about S&P index, right? Co corrected more than 30%. But since then, it has recovered uh, almost half, about half. Right now, we are down about 15%, so about half recovery uh since the after this uh this uh covid uh, situation happened yeah so i think going forward market is going to be challenging okay when the market corrected you know all the central banks started to give free money you know started started to reduce their interest rate you know started with china reducing their interest rate and later part with japan okay also reducing the interest rate. And then uh, there are also a lot of injection of uh, 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 liberating of the banking system and things like that. Then US also uh, very quickly in, uh, reduced the, the Fed also very quickly uh, reduced all the interest rate. So right now we are, all the central bank are racing to, not zero, racing to minus <laughs> on oh, interest man. rate. Yeah, so uh, in a way we are, they are published, they are, punishing the savers you know people put money in the banks they will be su they'll be suffering and at the same time uh, yeah so it's, it's quite challenging like right now in this period right 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 so it sounds like it's another round of qe <laughs> uh now now we have this call uh qe infinity <laughs> qe infinity yes. whoa this qe is scary man in the two zero uh zero uh eight right uh, nine, we have QE1, QE2, you know, things like that. But now we have what yeah. we call QE infinity. So they will, uh, whatever it takes, they will they will revive the, the market. But I think the challenge right now is not really in the QE because the challenge is when they, what they, they did the QE was, the idea was really to help the economy, you know, to help those people who are closing. I mean, they are, they are not having any business right now and they, mm. are, they, are, they want to, Take care of the workers they are potentially going to be out of job but what happened is mm. which is like what happened in 0809 the money that is pumped into the system people start to instead of going into the real economy to help the business mm. of course there are targeted uh uh targeted programs for the economy but majority of the money still go back to people buying like assets you know buying like stock stocks you know bonds and junk bonds and things like that yeah so we have mm, cheap mm. money in one sense, and then people who who have access to all this cheap money take risk. Mm. Yeah, I see. I see. Okay, yeah. as we are talking, the questions are all flowing in. Very good. Um, so if you have just joined us, um, welcome once again. Hi, Mi In. Hi, May. Thanks for joining us. We are right now on. Uh, we're right now live with Colin Xiao, who is the author of the Systematic Trader. And the topic we have today is investing in times of crisis. So if any of you have any burning questions on, the, on this topic, please post it in the comment box. And then um, I will invite Colin to respond to them. We may not have time to respond to all the questions. Yeah, but whoever posts questions will definitely qualify for the lucky draw happening at the end of today's session. So three of you will walk away with a copy of Colin's book, which is The Systematic Trader. Okay, so um, let me see. Colin, first question from Sam. Yep. What are the three things I should consider when investing in these times of uncertainty? I think uh, the first thing we want to watch is really on our, um, the leverage. Uh, you know, when, when we are in this uncertain time, if we take on too much debt, uh, that will be no good, uh, you know? So whether is it uh, you're investing in, in in house but you know investing in property but you can overdo it you know you can over leverage i think that will be something that is that is not advisable lah. so even mm. uh, uh if you over leverage on investing in stocks and things like that don't overdo it mm. i think that the first thing you should really watch it lah. you should not uh do it the second thing is really uh people get in usually too early okay really too early they mm. are, when the market crash on the 20 February, uh, 20th of February, right? Uh, recently, mm. I have a class of, uh, recently I have a class and one of the students is actually a reminder. 
Then he was telling me, Colin, mm. what, nowadays, uh, there are people uh, putting up the queue line, you know, that, that they pull up the thing and then let people queue oh. up, open up account, you know. So oh. there's a queue on the brokerage house. On top of that, uh, another another of my uh, Philip colleague last time is saying normally an account takes about one and a half hours, one and a half days, oh, sorry, one and a half weeks to be approved. But now it takes one month to approve, you know. So people oh. are queuing up to open up account. Uh. So I want right. to share you some context of bear market. In the so we have like a few full few recession. We have a recession in two thousand to two thousand three. We have like two. We have the uh, uh 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 SARS. You know, we have the SARS period, and then in, mm. in between that, they had, we had the September eleven in two thousand uh two thousand one. So this mm. whole period from two thousand to two thousand three, the market corrected uh forty seven percent. And you took like mm. 900 days okay then the global financial crisis is about 500 days 57 percent 500 days 57 percent. so from 07 to 09 about 500 days right now we are about 60 mm. days right now we oh. are about 60 days on the high and we are only down about 15 percent yeah mm. yeah so so we may be still early in this if let's say we are going to recession we may be still early mm. So what we should do is second thing, don't jump in too early, you know, because uh, mm. if you're going in too early, then it, it's, it's risky. Yeah. The last last thing is yeah. uh, really, if if you can have some sort of uh, uh, market timing tool, you know, some sort of way to know exactly when is the bottom. Uh, give you a clue, mm. right? An average bear market is about uh, 11 months, 11 months. Okay, right now we are like two months into the bear market. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So mm. just to give some mm. context, uh. okay. So okay. Um, uh, yeah. So don't leverage. Yeah. Don't don't leverage. Don't get get in too early. You know. Uh, mm. Usually, people get in too late. They they leverage too fast and they get in too early, and and really mm. uh, uh, learn how to protect yeah, yourself, yeah. learning how to get in and out. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 All right. Okay. Um, next question comes from Winnie. Ah. Uh. Uh, Winnie is asking, given low oil prices, um, almost negative, is it? <laughs> do you see that as a sign of, do you see that as a sign of possible booster swing for renewable energy stocks? In fact, I think it's the re reverse, huh? because they will talk about solar energy, talk about uh, nuclear energy, they got, there are talks of all this energy, but right now with the oil prices so low, right, you know, there will be less push uh, towards renewable because it, it, it will make sense if oil prices are high then you use solar energy because if you use solar energy and the, the cost is uh, lower right then it makes sense but right now with oil prices so low right all this solar energy or nuclear energy right will become higher already so it actually is it will slow slow the reverse to move uh, towards uh, 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 all this alternative energy. Like, I, I recently read about some nuclear energy because of all these things, right? Everything slowed down again. Yeah. yeah. Mm, oh. That's true. Uh. Mm, so yeah. actually... Talk about supply uh, demand. Yeah. Now there's so much supply. So, so you don't need another supply. You see? Yeah. It is, it is. Which is yeah. not a good sign for if we talk about global warming and climate change. Yeah. Because and now... Thing is now COVID, COVID no have global warming. Uh. Everybody is at home, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but with oil dirt cheap, once we bounce back, then we'll all start using the traditional uh, crude oil again. Yeah, and another thing about oil is oil, you cannot, you, it's not like tap, you know, when you drill for oil, right? Once the yeah. oil come up, right, you cannot say, oh, guys, today oil price is cheap, cannot turn off the drill and yeah. Yeah, keep pumping the oil, you know, yeah. if not, it will damage the, the, the well, you see. So they will keep pumping right. this oil and where do they keep this oil so what happened in in the in the situation is when the futures right went to zero is because uh, they have all this oil and then they store the oil they store the oil initially they store the oil on land then after that there's too much they store the oil in the tankers in the sea like singapore along the uh, sea right uh, there's tankers over there but it costs money to store oil also you know, it costs money to store mm. oil. So what happened is during that period of time, right, is people find that uh, people view, right, it is, it's, it's, it's more worth it uh, to buy oil uh, next month rather than buy oil this month. Because if I buy oil now, I still mm. have to 
store the oil. Mm. To store the oil and that cost me money. You know? Mm. So what happened is they say, no, I don't want I, I give you the oil. I don't want the oil right now. I'd rather buy mm. next month or the following month, you know. So that is the, the challenge at that time during that time. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, welcome for those who have just joined us. Hi Eugene, hi Michelle, hi Bruce. Yep, so we are now on FB Live with Colin Xiao, who is the author of The Systematic Trader. And our topic is on investing in times of crisis. So if you have any questions right now, uh, if you have any questions for Colin, please post them in the comment box. Uh, three copies of his book will be given away to lucky draw winners at the end of this show. All right. And at the same time, if you are watching us, please help us to share this video um, on your wall, in your group, so that more people can learn from us as well. Okay, next question, uh, Colin, yeah. comes from Gabriel. Gabriel yeah. is asking, hi Colin, is gold a good investment during these times? Uh, actually, it, it is. Uh, okay, so uh, gold is like, a, it's like a safety kind of uh, asset, you know, when 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 people don't know where, where to put, uh, gold is like, gold is a, a, like a default, you know? people will put money in gold because everything is like risky, you know, so they will put uh, money in gold. So, uh, the this disadvantage of gold is number one, it costs money to buy gold. Okay, because either you buy the physical gold or you buy the actual gold, it costs you money. If you buy physical gold, you need to have a place to store. You know, you can you cannot be storing it in your house. You need you need to have a place to store the, uh, the gold. Second thing is, uh, 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 if you buy right, then there's cost because either you buy a gold ETF, which is you, you which uses a futures contract. That also costs money also. So that's the challenge with gold. Because gold, unlike stocks, right? Stocks pay dividend. You know, every year mm. they can pay dividend. Gold cannot have extra gold. Uh. Cannot have children of gold. <laughs> you know, so gold is just a static thing. But gold is very good when you have uh in terms of crisis. Okay, interestingly, right? In crisis, uh, gold is good, and one more currency is good. Guess what currency? <laughs> What currency is good? Singapore currency is good. Oh, Singapore dollar uh, usually in crisis will be good. So Singapore oh. is like a hedge like that. You know? So when people don't know where to put beside US dollar, they will also put in Singapore dollars also. So yeah, that is traditionally right where we were, when people feel that hey, they are in in, uh, in in danger, uh, they'll put US dollar, go and uh, even Singapore dollar, they view it as like a safety. Uh. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. Okay. Thanks yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's a really good time to be holding Singapore dollars and as a Singaporean as well. As well. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, hi, Alexandra. We have just joined us. Yeah, we we are with Colin Xiao right now, author of Systematic Trader. Um, if you have any questions to ask him, kindly post in the comment box and do help us to share this video with your friends on your wall as well, so that more people can learn together. Um, next question. Colin, yes. do you feel that hedge funds are buying into the market now or is it the retail investors? Uh, and currently, I feel that the retail investors are, are buying into the market. Actually, all this information you can uh, find online. Okay, uh, over the last, I will say, uh, three, almost a month, okay, uh, the big boys have been selling. You can go to SGX, you find, there's a link, uh, you can find under the link, institution buying, versus uh, uh retail buying you know uh almost every week they, re they report right what is the amount of dollars institution are buying and um, uh, the amount retail are buying almost every week uh, the re institution are selling and the e retail are buying you know so oh. i think out of like yeah because it's, it's quite consistent uh. in fact i did a post oh. on the Facebook group yeah so at least for singapore market it's like that they every week they report what is the institution buying and selling yeah, so in the last two, two, three weeks, they've been selling more aggressively. Talking about like 400 million, uh, 300 million uh, a week. Yeah, kind of thing. And the retail ah. are the, on the other side, the retail are the ones that are buying this. Ah, okay. Yeah. And what does this signal, Colin? So, uh, okay, you see, when the market goes up, right? When the market goes up, there will be uh, people opening account and you know, participating in the bull market over over the last even mm. eleven years, ah, uh, from uh two thousand nine, March all the way to two thousand twenty, right? Eleven years, right? 
people there are people participating in the stock market but then there will be a small group of people right they'll say no the market go up too much already i want to wait for market crash then i want to get into buy so mm. so now now at this period right there are people rushing in to open up trading account and then they are mm. they are new to this market you know they, they open trading mm. account they are new to this market yes or no they never they haven't they have not opened any trading account before so when they come into the market they have no idea where price is you know in the start market drop okay it now looks like market is going up they just start to rush in to get in and i think mm. right now there's another theory la. the other theory is because everybody is on lockdown you know mm. singapore pool <laughs> is closed singapore pool is closed so in order to have some excitement now where did they go <laughs> you know, that is another the theory about Singapore. Uh. I think there is maybe a certain percentage of truth uh, because people just, just need to bet on something, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. now use the stock market as the new yeah, betting yeah, center. Yeah, alternative uh, gambling <laughs> Yeah, which is no good. Uh, Scary, uh, man. Uh, most likely in, in Chinese, they say 大鱼吃小鱼, right? Even though in a short yeah. run, people will make money but in the long run yeah. those people who are new inexperienced people who are greedy yeah. end up will lose money i recently have a mm. trader a full-time trader he told me his boss no his sister's boss right max out all his credit card and buy shares oh. <laughs> yeah it even, even appear on the newspaper it even appear on the newspaper this guy right max out all his credit card and go and buy shares recently of course he may be profitable now because that, that report came in about maybe a month ago he may be profitable now but the point is yeah. when you're profitable you will not so so you're not you will not say stop right you most likely will say okay yeah. let's, let's do some more because i'm i'm so smart suddenly you know i just open up a car and i'm making so much money so likelihood they will yeah. add on and on and on position and when it when it really move against you you know that's it now yeah 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 and that's the gambler's mentality la, right when you start yeah, winning you, you keep you, chasing you after it stop, when you start winning you will not stop ma. yeah yeah okay thanks for that yep yeah. um welcome those that have just joined us yeah. hi chin hong hi frederick yeah well we're calling now um on a topic of investing in times of crisis so if you have questions please post in the comment box and do help us to share this video on your facebook uh we have another question calling uh coming yeah. from hui Yi. She's sharing yeah. about what do you think about Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency now? Oh, okay. Interesting topic. Okay, so <laughs> Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is actually not uh, uh, something new. Uh, okay, uh, it went up to high of uh, 20,000 in uh, 2018. Okay, mm. so you look at technology, right? Uh, or look at all this uh, technology. There is a trend to it. I think maybe you mm. know, okay? We talk about uh, online, online or internet, you know, online shopping and things like that. When it first started, mm. the first burst, right, was in uh, year two thousand. We had the dot com. Remember the At the time, we have the dot com. Uh, anything that is listed dot com. Uh, anything that has a company dot com can list in the Nasdaq. Okay, so that was yeah. the dot com era. But there isn't yes. any add value. La. There isn't any add value to the business. They, they are just making eyeballs and things like that. So mm. after that, that crash, right? Then Amazon, Facebook, those those companies that have really business model, right? Started to really mm. go up. You know? I think same mm. thing will, will happen to uh, all this cryptocurrency. Initially, mm. right? It is unregulated. Mm. Okay? All this is unregulated. It is not centralized. And then there is there is no uh there is no um monopoly you know there's so many other coins during the, during the peak of the bitcoin uh, there were so many other coins you know so mm. many other alternative coin things like that. same thing with the dot com era there were so many other dot com company coming up and listing their company but eventually they will it will it will all merge uh, or all come into like a one one coin or one kind of standard right so right now we mm. talk about Amazon, you know, Baba, Alibaba, mm. these are the few main players, you know, which, which house everyone in this. And then second thing is, 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 uh, second thing is, uh, is add value, it add value to, because people have the convenience of shopping online. And then number, number three is also regulated. Okay. Because initially Bitcoin is not regulated, but right now, eventually I think Bitcoin will become to a state where it can help people 
in terms of uh, uh, information, you know, in, we call it blockchain technology. In terms of information passed to another one, it can be, it can help to do that. Number two, mm. uh, it will be uh, regulated. That means there will be a, there will be a, a someone uh, say, okay, let me do this. Okay, do it properly. And then thirdly, mm. is likelihood it is going to be um, a, a, it, it must add value like it must add value and and have a kind of monopoly kind of thing la. so i think every mm. technology is like that la. yeah yeah so mm. cryptocurrency i think yes but whether it's bitcoin i don't know yeah mm. cryptocurrency mm. is something that can add value but uh, mm. whether it's bitcoin we don't know think about it la, uh, like when when we have uh uh during the uh, same thing with uh live music also live music we have like lime wire i don't do you know we have Le napster and things like that they were very unregulated yep. music yeah then it crashed right. and then eventually we had very regulated itunes uh yeah apple music spotify you know but this one has a revenue model ma, because the, the mm. publisher all these people still get a cut of this revenue Mm. Uh, it's controlled it's not like napster or this not controlled it's controlled it's regulated mm. and value mm. and then it will rise uh. mm. so look for something that is like that no? mm, mm, mm. Uh, real, yeah. de delivering real value la, right yes 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 okay good yeah. um yep you have just joined us hi doris hi johnny hi sally hi terence thank you for joining us we are live with colin xiao who is the author of the systematic trader He's now taking questions on the topic of investing in times of crisis. Yeah, if you have any questions, please post in the comments box. Um, I can't promise that we are able to answer all the questions. Yeah, we'll try our best. But uh, for those who post your questions, three of you will walk away with a copy of Colin's book, The Systematic Trader in the Lucky Draw. And do help us to share this video while we are watching so that other people can benefit as well. Okay. Um, okay, this person's question I cannot miss. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle is the one who taught me how to use StreamYard. So obviously, oh. I must, I must let her answer her question, Colin. Okay. If you are a noob and huh? relatively conservative, what suggestions do you have for us? Um, actually, the best thing you can do, right, is not to do stock uh picks. You know, if you are new, uh, don't need to do stock picks. Uh, all you need to do is just to go to, let's say, assuming you're a Singaporean, right? Uh, what you want to do is just to look at the STI ETF. You know, we call it, we call it the STI ETF. Basically, ETF is like an exchange traded fund. So you heard of like uh, unit trust funds and, and mutual funds, right? So ETF is an uh, exchange traded fund, but it is not, it is passive managed. It's passive managed. So they, they don't have a lot of fees like, uh, unit trust fund and mutual funds. So what you can do is, if you don't know what to do, just buy the e STI ETF, you know, and uh, just hang on, uh, you know. STI ETF, basically what is inside STI ETF is the 30 biggest company in Singapore, you know, and then you just uh, write it through. Uh. That means if it, even if it's a recession and the recession come in like another few more months, we, you should be able to write this whole thing through because over a long period of time, uh, the STI, I think the statistics about 30 years, right? STI go up about 9%, 9% mm. a year. So if you are willing mm. to hang on, if you don't know, uh, want to look at something that is won't go to zero, you know, it cannot mm. be all the 30 companies go to zero, right? So you buy the STI mm. ETF, ETF, it's low cost, you're buying the big blue chips, you are, you are diversifying. So this will give mm. you uh, good luck. Uh, Another thing you can do is really to invest in yourself. So I'm really an advocate of investing in myself. Like this month, uh, mm. in this crisis period, uh, where I attend so many courses, uh, online courses, so many courses, you know, paid courses, you know, I attend so many paid courses. So really invest in yourself. Uh, because at the end of the day, if let's say you can make 10%, 20%, 30%, it's based on uh, your decision-making pros, pros. Your machine here, uh, you know, so if you can invest in this machine, uh, from 10%, now you know how to make 15%. Uh, then it makes sense to invest in you, uh, you know, rather than just mm. invest in the stock itself, first invest in you, uh, so that you have higher leverage, mm. right? Then in the future, you can get higher returns with you. Mm, yeah. mm. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, I have a related question here. So it comes from Kim. Uh. Kim is asking, um, just now we're talking about ETF, right? So mm. her question is Singapore mm. ETF or US S&P ETF, which one is better? Okay, good question. Um, so the, cons the, the just now the question is answered because you're Singaporean. Because if you're Singaporean, there's no currency risk. Oh, there's no currency risk. That means you buy US uh, ETF, right? Uh, there is currency risk because it's priced in US dollar. Okay, it's priced in US dollar. Somebody asked Warren Buffett, uh, or actually Warren Buffett in one of his letters, he said, if right now I were to kick the bucket, what would I do with the money, right? He will put 90% in US S&P ETF, 90%, and 10% mm. in a bond fund. So that is what he will do. Uh. But for us Singaporean, we have one more reason uh, is uh, currency mm. visa. Or currency mm. visa. But if you buy US ETF, yes, it's good. It's, it, it's, uh, US S&P ETF is uh, even bigger it's an even bigger uh, 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 companies. They're all the Microsoft, Apple, all the biggest company in the world. But the thing, the mm. thing about it is you have currency risk, or you have like is price in US dollar, ma. so you have this currency risk to factor mm. in. Okay, but if you talk about this company itself, which one is com which one is a better company? I would prefer the mm. US companies, ah. you know, because US mm. companies are much bigger. You compare Apple with creative right i will buy apple <laughs> no creative is not in the sti yeah. but you will buy the big big companies the only thing is uh, currency risk and why is it right now that is a challenge out uh, us dollar is because hey right now is uh right now is what we call fat printing money infinity you know when will the day come out uh, when they realize that the us debt is so much uh, it cannot sustain this debt uh, we don't know when we do not know when mm. If let's say you US a country uh, is a person uh, long time ago mm. is already declared bankrupt already. You know, it's already declared bankrupt long time ago. So uh because mm. of the debt that he have, okay, and mm. compared to the money he make and the debt that he have is already a, a, a bankrupt person. But because it's US, okay, and mm. US is a very unique position, US dollar is a very unique position. Why? Because when you buy oil is priced in US dollar. So you have to buy US dollar to buy oil. You buy gold, also priced in US dollar. So you buy US dollar to buy gold. You buy mm. almost everything I need to buy, go through US dollar, buy corn, everything is priced through US dollar. And, mm. and so because you have this to go to US dollar as the as the safety currency. But mm. in reality, in reality, it is not like that. In reality, if you are talking about this person, uh, can't, this US uh, is a person, uh, long time already he's mm. declared back. That's also wow. reason why US always want to protect US dollar and you oil are priced in US dollar. You know, they, they always want to protect this thing that oil must be priced in US dollar. Oil cannot be priced in now. Now China thinking of pricing it in yuan. Uh, you know, that time <laughs> I think it was a uh, long rumor a uh, long time ago. I think it was yeah. Iraq. Iraq wanted to start a uh, oil uh, the futures uh, priced in other currency. Uh, then what happened to Iraq? <laughs> invasion <laughs> you know they cannot afford oil to be priced in any other dollars uh, you know because right their the, uh, the currency is it so right uh, that's the challenge uh. so but with china right. coming in right china can maybe come in and stay hey now i'll do price in my currency <laughs> that will mm. cause the same, uh, but i think it's a slow shift uh. mm. yeah. and also have to do with mm. military power so so mm. military power because they protect all the oil, ma. so it's also the mm. thing. La. So military power, mm. US dollar, military power, US dollar, and 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 uh uh all these are linked. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of geopolitical considerations. Uh. Yes, yes, yes. So kind, kind, kind of supporting yeah. the US dollar. Correct. <laughs> Although they are bankrupt. Correct, correct. But the, I think the most important thing for everyone uh, you listening here is to learn how to invest. Uh. The worst thing you can do right now is to leave the money in the bank. Why? Because everyone is going to minus interest rate already. So you go in money in the bank, you confirm. I think you get worse huh, before you get. I don't think you get better. It will keep getting worse. Huh. So mm. the money in the bank, the acceleration of your devaluation of your money uh, will get high faster and faster. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So on this topic, uh, the next question is from Thomas. Uh, Thomas would like to ask, um, would you feel that value investing approach is preferred to dividend stock approach for the Singapore market during this time? 
I don't use both. Huh? <laughs> okay, when investing, right? When investing, the idea is you want to buy uh, value. You want to buy uh, good stocks, you know, of value. But the challenge in market like that, right, is it does not mean when the stock is undervalued, it will go up in value. Yes or no? It can remain undervalued for a long time. Huh? So that is the challenge with uh, the value and fair investing approach. The dividend approach are also challenging because dividend, you use past dividend as a gauge, ma, how, how much dividend they are paying in the past to de decide whether this is a good stock. Ma. But it's not feel mm. forward looking, you see. They can say, oh, mm. no money, stock dividend. I think it is uh, Exxon, is it? After 48 years, is it? They stopped paying dividend. They stopped dividend for the first time. Since World oh, War II. Yeah, yeah, since World War II. Oh. Uh, mm. They will pay dividend every year, you know, mm. and then suddenly, oops, this year I think I can't pay dividend anymore. Yeah, so it's mm. difficult to difficult to uh difficult to use dividend approach. For me, my approach is systematic approach. Okay, mm. In systematic approach. How it works is we 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 do a we do analysis of the market. Okay, and then we mm. find strong stocks in the current market. Okay, like example. Mm. In uh, February uh, 17, right? I, mm. I picked up a stock called Zoom, ZM, right? Zoom, 17 of February. And I told all the people in the Facebook uh, group, right? And also all my graduates, 17 of February. The market corrected uh, since then 30% 30, 30 down and then right now recovered 15%. So in general, from 20th until now, it corrected about 15%. Zoom, right? From 17 February until now, went up 80%. Eight zero percent yeah. So you, if you can use comparative, you can identify what is a good stock. Yeah. Uh, and use systematic approach, you can identify what's a good stock. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. And yeah. that also leads us to the next question, which uh. is by Shannon. Uh. So say someone who doesn't have time to monitor market, uh. Uh, what strategy or tool can be deployed to tap into market opportunities? Kind of related to what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Actually, actually the easiest timing tool ever, okay? The e easiest timing tool ever is if you read the papers and when they say we are in recession, okay, then you open up your account and buy. Uh, that is the easiest timing tool ever, okay? But, but officially, uh, we must officially say we are in recession, then you buy. Okay, let me explain why. Uh. You see, um, in a recession, right, okay, in a recession, six months before the recession uh, is the worst period for stocks. So it's not mm. recession itself. It's always six months before the recession. Okay. So on average, I think 64% of the time, market is down before the recession. Okay. Before the recession. So it really, the market really came down. Okay. And the average recession is about 11 months. Okay. It ranges uh, 11 months to about uh, uh, 300 days or so, about 11 months. Uh, 11 months. So if you have time to hold, right? And you do not know where is the bottom, right? When the market, when the official, we are officially in recession. When they say we are officially in recession, you buy and you can hold more than one year or one and a half years or two years, you'll be profitable. Do you follow what I'm saying? That is the easiest timing too. Oh, so understand that the mm. stock market does not move with the economy. The stock market is always in front of the economy. People will sell. Uh, in anticipation of the recession, people will buy in anticipation of a recovery. Do you follow? Mm. Yeah. So if you if you if you officially say we are in recession, uh, mm. and then actually in, if you say you are in recession, you can give maybe three to six months. I say okay, within that period of three to six months, you buy something, uh, and you can hold for one year, one or two years, uh, mm. I think since World War Two, you'll be profitable. Uh. Since World mm. War II, every event in since World War II, there are about eleven recessions. Since World War II, mm. about and the last, uh, and the out of the eleven recessions, six of the recession, the market actually went up. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you think about it, like, And recession does not last very, very long, like, generally. Mm. Oh, mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for yeah. the advice. Yep. Yeah. Um. So for <laughs> those who are watching right now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, hi, Michelle. Hi, Jukwang. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we are now live with uh, Colin Xiao, who is the author of The Systematic Trader. And the topic today is investing in times of crisis. 
Um, wow, Colin, time flies, man. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be a half an hour segment. Um, half an hour. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I know you're really tired, a very long day well, for okay. you. Thank you for staying so late with us. Um, I think we will have time for two more questions. Yep, uh, before yeah. we call it a day. Yeah. So for those who have burning questions right now, please post your question in the comment box. And then uh, we, I will invite Colin to, to answer them. Um, but my apologies if we can't answer all the questions. Um, uh, but definitely, whoever posts questions, you will have a chance to take part in our lucky draw, where three of you will walk away with a copy of The Systematic Trader, which is written by none other than Colin Xiao. Okay, um, next question. Wow, uh, Colin, this question is close to your heart, man. <laughs> um, is the Trader GPS program more suitable for CFD <laughs> only, or is it okay for options as well? <laughs> very... Who else will ask, man? <laughs> no, you are the inventor. <laughs> the inventor uh, of Trader be, GPS. It can be used for both. Uh. It can be used for Trader GPS, can be used for CFD. You know, even you lose leverage, you can use it for leverage. You can use it for options. Options uh, is a little bit, uh, you can do strategy. You can use strategy to make money from options, uh, but both. Both is possible, yeah. I, I don't see the question there. Is there a lot of questions? Um, there are quite a lot. Okay. Um, I'm picking. Yep, I'm okay. picking them. Oh, so okay. whatever you see on screen, uh, yep, those that have been oh, picked. Okay. But there are questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> there are questions in other places. Meaning? Uh, uh, never mind. It's okay. On my watch list, there are questions. Oh, you are right. I can't see uh, your watch. Uh, I can only see those on uh, Candy Creation page. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> so next time was uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, so that was our second last question. Our uh, last question today. Um. Okay. Let's see. It's from Cheng Wu. Uh -huh. Cheng Wu is asking, "What do you mean by strong or weak stock you mentioned just now? Is it related okay. to fundamental of the company?" Or just oh. so-called hot stock with high volume in stock market. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, it's, it's not like that. Okay, so what happened is is uh it's not not neither. Okay, also, okay. So what happened is when we talk about strong stocks, right? It's really very situational. When let's say example, I give you an example, right? When in this COVID virus, uh, issue happened, right? There are certain stocks that are actually right now doing very well. Okay, remote working stocks, stocks like Zoom stocks like uh, uh netflix is not remote voting view uh remote working uh, but it, it benefit from this virus situation stocks mm. that are related to uh related to um the covid virus getting the vaccine they are they are doing very well also and then mm. we have also uh food okay smart farming potentially can do very well also because why there's right now disruption in all these uh supply chain uh, food supply chain and things like that recently i read italy mm. there's a lot of olive they just leave it to uh you know rot and things like that uh before before this crisis happened somewhere in january uh this mm. i just read recently one quarter of the world pigs uh, died one ah. quarter 25 percent of all the world pig died because of the swine flu okay and right now plus this COVID thing right and then they don't have the supply chain thing, right? People will be more affected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, people will be more affected now. So these are some of the sectors that will be benefiting from it. Then there are other sectors that will be suffering. Example, tourism. Example, uh, uh, cruises. You know, things like that. They will be suffering because of this virus. So I have a tool that is able to uh, uh, identify, right, situation like this. What are the strong stocks and what are the weak stocks? Are. A bit difficult to explain right now. But in general, uh, we compare that with the index. Okay, we compare that with the index. Index is like what's happening right now, the average. And some stocks will outperform the index. Okay, so like the COVID virus situation, some stocks outperform it, then you identify them, then some stocks underperform. Then from there, you identify what are the strong and weak, weak stocks. Are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, um, I'm going to do a share screen. Um, so we have almost um, come to the end of our session today. But I know many of you still have many questions for Colin. Yep, um, so on the slide here, you will see some ways you can get in touch with Colin if you want to find out more about the tool that he talked about earlier. 
uh, you can uh, follow Colin on his Facebook or follow him on LinkedIn. He has a website as well. So these are the three ways you can snap a photo right now. Okay, and um, Colin is also very very kind. He has a he has a e course that he hosted on his website colinsell.com. So if you follow this URL, you'll be able to um, um, attend this e course. Colin, is it for free? Yes, it's free. It's free. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So he's sharing this e course with all our viewers. So please take a photo. Then you can uh, uh, get access to this. Yeah, this is O, All right? That's an e cost slash O because I will put zero. I don't have it's slash. <laughs> Remember okay. the last uh, the last alphabet is O, not zero. Okay, so this is a gift from uh, Colin to all of you. All right, uh, next week uh, AMA series will pause for a week because on Friday we are organizing our first ever talking book. Talking Books is where we are inviting six published authors, many of them very esteemed authors, to be um, sharing with us in one, e one evening in this webinar. So you see the URL or the QR code, you can scan or key in the URL to register. This will be happening on Zoom webinar. So you do need to register in order to get the Zoom login details. So in Talking Books, we have Andrew Chow, we have Joanne Lai, we have Douglas O'Loughlin, we have Chris Ang, we have NDU, and we have Sari Marsden. All of them will be sharing a passage um, from their book. And all of them have written, have written on different topics, so that's going to be really interesting. And other than that, each of them is going to share with you three practical tips, all right, that you can apply to your life. So in one evening, you're going to walk away with 18 learning points. So do uh, register and join us on next Friday. That's 22nd of May. All right. So before we end, uh, Colin, thank you very much uh, you. for spending your evening with us, um, answering many, many questions. Um, and from the comments that I've been seeing, many of them find it very helpful. They were all thanking you for your insights. So I thank think you, you have you. really delivered a lot of value to our viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Before we end, uh, continue to comment and leave your feedback for us in the comment box to help us to continue to improve. You can share this Facebook video as well. So um, after this session, it will still be on our Facebook page. And then uh, please like this video and support us. Um, if you want to buy local books, you can check out candycreation.com. We have a bookshop there. Um, and we will post out the books to you. All right. So last but not least, I want to thank all of you for really spending your precious evening with us in our episode four of Hello, I'm an Author, Ask Me Anything. Thank you for your very, very active participation. All right. So I'll see you all next week. Do register for Talking Books happening on Friday, which is 22nd of May. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks. Call you. Say goodbye. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Bye-bye. So